please? I'm Lee. Lee. Span. Yes. Where are you from? I'm from Georgia, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up there, went to school at the University of Georgia. So first tell job me about in Georgia. Yourself. Well, see, see this, is, this is my time to ask oh, you questions. Go ahead. Okay. Get uh, me. Nail me. All right. Nail me, Lee. Tell me all about your show. As quick as possible. Oh, my show is, um, my show has a simple goal, and that's change the world one factual error at a time. All I want to do is bring the people the truth as I see it, which isn't always supported by the facts, I'll admit, but are the facts that important? Facts change. My opinion never will. Um, so you're from Charleston, big family. Yeah, I grew up on James Island, and then uh, when I was uh, 12, I moved downtown and was issued my blue blazer. That you're continuing to wear. I continue, exactly, yeah. And what school did you, what, what high school are you on the line? Yeah, on the yeah. High school, yeah. Oh, we got to cut this interview. It's being bread. I can't get it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so who's the funniest member of the Colbert family? It is not me. You ask, I'm one of 11 brothers and sisters. Jimmy, Eddie, Mary, Billy, Mark, Tom, Jay, Lou, Paul, Peter, and Steven. You ask any of them, they'll tell you I am not the funniest one. Each of them will tell you that they are the funniest one. What do you say? Uh, oh. See, someone might watch this, and then I'll be in big trouble. No. Okay, no got it. So I'll, say, I'll play it safe and say Tommy. Okay. Is he the oldest? Or he's the middle. He's the middle, okay. So I can spread it either way. <laughs> um, so, tastiest low country treat. We have shrimp and grits, shrimp and RC grits. Cola. Shrimp and grits. You don't have to go any further. But I'll, I, if you don't mind, I'll say shrimp and hominy. Really? Yeah. No, not going with the boiled peanuts? No, boiled peanuts are good. I guess, well, I guess that is more of a treat. Mm -hmm. I guess Tasty's treat would be boiled peanuts, but it has to be hot and it has to be a lot of beer involved and it has to be cold. <laughs> but Tasty's meal, shrimp and, shrimp and hominy, I'll, I'll take that three times a day. I, I will do the same. Or barbecue. Really? What, yeah. what type I'm of a, sauce? I'm a, you... I'm, a, I'm a Bessinger's fan. Well, I have to have one sandwich. I have to have one Big Joe pork every time I'm here. Have you already had that one? No, I have not had it. I just got here last night. And then I bring it back. Uh -huh. I bring it back up to uh, uh, New York. I usually bring about five pounds of it and lay it out for my crew. Do you uh, met your wife here? Is she a big barbecue fan as well? I did meet my wife here. She grew up around the corner from me on Church Street. I grew up. I was on East Bay, and she was on Church. And uh, when we were kids, um, even though well, one of us is a year older. I'm not supposed to say who. I'm not asking. Exactly. <laughs> but I went to Porter, and she went to Ashley Hall, and so those they only mixed on grades, like on on dances, like the 8th grade dance, 9th mm -hmm. grade dance, and so I was in the wrong grade to meet her. And um, uh, it wasn't until we both moved off. She moved to New York and I moved to Chicago, and we were both home for a vacation. And we ran into each other at the Satilli Theater. How Thinking that the other person's from out of town, of course. <laughs> of which course. made it easier to flirt. <laughs> right. what, um, what's your favorite spot in the low country? Uh, any creek, you know, probably maybe Submarine Creek behind uh, Sullivan's Island, floating in it. How often do you get back there? Every, well, probably won't do it this trip. It's only, I'm only here for two days, but anywhere on the water. The, um, okay, so there's a lo it's a long trip from Charleston to hosting the President's Correspondence Dinner. <laughs> yeah. Tell me a, bit, a little bit about the path that you had to take. Oh, uh, you know, it, most of it was pretty common, you know. Um, I went to Chicago, went to theater school at Northwestern, and then I, then I was a waiter for years, you know. Would you like some fresh cracked pepper on that? Coffee, cappuccino, espresso? Oh, you're very good. Absolutely. I'm very, I'm very good. I think everybody should be a waiter for a while. So everybody should learn to serve and they'll know how to treat a servant. Um, you know, I waited tables for years. Uh, I, I was a member of the Second City in Chicago and then I got seen by somebody from New York and they said, would you come do the show in New York? So I went and I moved to New York and worked in New York and still lived in Chicago with my, with my young bride commuted for two years, flying back and forth, which is pretty, it keeps the marriage fresh. You don't see your wife much for the first two years. And um, and then finally I got a, you know, a good enough gig to move to New York, and everything just falls together in a chain from from not saying no to any employment. You know, it's, it's, it's not an extraordinary chain of events, just it's a long one, it's a 20 year chain of events. And look at where you are now. This is actually a question from our trusty photographer, Alan. Mm -hmm. Who has the biggest post-Daily Show career, you or Steve Carell? Oh, oh, it's 
got to be Carell, man. He's it on a stick. I mean, I can't think of anybody bigger than Steve Carell right now. Except maybe Stephen Colbert. Maybe. 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 Um, so, speaking to the real Stephen Colbert, what yes. are your general political views? No, nothing specific. Uh, I believe uh, the United States should just be uh, uh, a collective where all the decisions are made by a council of uh, uh, representatives. Um, I think that... Uh, let me start that again. I think that the United States uh, should be a, a group of individual uh, sovereign nations that come together under one sort of federal system. Uh, and then each of these sovereign nations, let's take South Carolina for example, sends representatives to a central, look, that's called Washington DC. And then um, let's say, uh, yeah, one representative for every 650,000 people. And then, let's get to the states probably should have two, uh, let's call them senators. And then this those people should, you know, uh, come together under one federal system and then through uh, voting and ratify, someone have to ratify and say, say let's have an executive, we'll have an executive person. It's very complicated. My political views are very complicated. Well, it seems very far-fetched. It really yes. does. Mm -hmm. Well, what would Stephen Colbert from the Colbert Report say to you, Stephen Colbert from the Low Country? He would say you have a, um, you have a salad stain on your tie. <laughs> Change that. That's not how you want to present yourself to the world. See this <laughs> terrible vinaigrette stain right here. But wasn't the vinaigrette delicious? It was. It's fantastic. Fantastic. Um, now, this is something that I've just really always wondered, having watched the Colbert Report. Yeah. Do you prep your guests? Do they know that they're nope. talking to a character? I do not. Well, all this is what I say to my guests. All my guests, I say, uh, I say the exact same thing. You know that I am. A, I say, you know, I am a professional idiot. Correct. And and then they they usually say yes I've seen the show, and I say and I am willfully ignorant of whatever it is you want to talk about tonight, and it you are welcome to disabuse me of my ignorance, and they say I understand and that's it that's the only thing we ever say I ever say. So when you talk to the politician, I feel mm -hmm. that they are at a loss. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. They know exactly who I am. There's no here. I mean, they have press secretaries. Yeah. You know, like someone who doesn't have a press secretary, I could understand not knowing who I am. But these people pay somebody to know who I am. Excellent. Um, uh, did you get any of the material for your character from Charlestonians? Only, uh, only wearing regimental striped ties. <laughs> and uh, you got a book deal. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the book. I don't know. You got any ideas? I got a year to write it and not an <laughs> idea left in my head. Please don't tell my publisher. Not even, not a word. Okay. Keep that. <laughs> and, um, what's your favorite part about taping the show every single night? My favorite part? Um, I get to wear a new tie every night. I have yet to repeat a tie on the show. What's the word tonight? I don't know. I'm <laughs> off. I'm off for two weeks. <laughs> the word is drinking. <laughs> Having fun in the low country. Um, would you or would you mind doing your stupid human trick? Sure, that's fine. This is my stupid human trick. Okay, you might want to get a get get how you frame me like give me give me this give me this. Okay, okay. This is not the trick. This is the trick. Okay. Hello, ladies. They love it. Women love a freak show. Um, and could I possibly, yes. you've answered all of my questions mm -hmm. fantastically, honestly, honestly into, into a T, yes. um, would you have, could you look into that camera and say, happy birthday, David Hughes? Who's David Hughes? That would be uh, my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so this is for not on air. Yes. Happy birthday, happy birthday, David Hughes. You take good care of her here. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you.